guys and welcome to my youtube channel my name is flora in today's video i'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of living in a shared accommodation here in the uk now i'm talking from experience because i once lived in a shared accommodation and there are a few things that i have to say about it and i think would be beneficial to anyone coming to the uk either as a student a professional or you're going to be or if you're going to be interested in living in a shared accommodation i have something to say that is going to be beneficial to you i promise so watch till the end you don't want to miss out so without any further ado let's just swipe straight into this video so i've written a few of my points down just so i don't forget um because Usually when I think about these videos, I'm sometimes in bed and I'm like, hmm, hmm, let me document this. <laughs> so I've written a few things down and I'm going to obviously be reading it off my phone because, yeah, like I said, I wrote it down. I think it's always nice to start with the good side. Let's start with the good side. So um, first of all, I just want to say that I lived in a shared accommodation when I was at uni here in the UK. And it's not just students that live in shared accommodations, even professionals live in shared accommodations as well. Okay, so one of the reasons why I happened to then be in a shared accommodation was when I went to uni, at the time that I got to uni, um, I was supposed to be on campus and they kept on sending emails like book your campus, register to be on the campus, something along, the, something along those lines. And I just ignored it. I honestly ignored it. I was like, I have time, I have time, I have time. I did know that campuses, um, I'm going to say uni campus, yeah. I didn't know that uni campus went, went this quickly. I just thought uh, it would be there. As long as you're a student, you get somewhere to stay. Common sense, yeah, common sense. Usually the number of student, students should equate to the number of um, rooms in the campus, right? That was what my mind was telling me. But obviously, <laughs> I was wrong. And obviously, when I then decided to apply, um, for uni accommodation, I couldn't get in. So I had to look for an alternative and I ended up in a house share right from my very first year at university. So let's start with the pros. Um, one of the benefits I'll say of living in a shared accommodation is it's easier to make friends. <laughs> now, if you're new to the UK or if you're new to a particular area, for example, I was in a particular area and then when I went to uni, I went to uni in a town that was very close to london now never lived in london before so i didn't really know much about the area um, and obviously when i went there and i was in student accommodation i was so it was not student accommodation but when i was in my shared accommodation it was so easy to make friends because everyone that was in that accommodation with me were students of the same university that i was going to so it was easy for me to make friends that way and um like i said um if you're new to the uk um, this is one of the easiest ways to make friends because the UK can be very isolated sometimes. So when you've come into a, you know an accommodation, there are other people like-minded, hopefully, um, living in that accommodation. You can then ask questions about so many things like, oh, where's the post office? Or do you know where this is? Or, you know, things like that. Yeah. And I'll say living, obviously, in a shared accommodation, you don't have that feeling of fear, like, oh, I'm alone in this country all by myself, or I'm alone in this area all by myself. I don't know anybody and I'm living in a one bedroom house all by myself um, also another benefit of staying in a shared accommodation is if you make friends with them with your housemates and you guys are good pals they can even end up like receiving parcels for you so like if you're not home and something um, gets delivered you're more more often than not more than likely there'll be someone at home to pick up your parcels that i definitely enjoyed that i definitely liked um another benefit is shared living costs that you already know that <laughs> the cost of living in the uk is not cheap the cost of living is pretty high up there now depending on the area but to be honest it is not it's not cheap living in the uk you have to pay bills that's that's it basically so but if you're living in a shared accommodation and your bills are inclusive with your rent, so if you're paying the rent, the, the, the rent is inclusive of the bills, then that is a bonus because you don't have to worry about any bill. You just pay your rent and that's everything all inclusive. Um, even if your your house share isn't bills inclusive, um, you're then sharing the bills with other people. So for example, you pay your rent and then 
you need to pay you pay your rent as an individual and then but then you need to pay council tax if you're a student you usually don't pay council tax well i didn't because i was i think students are exempted from council tax but then you have things like electricity gas water bill um those ones it's not just it doesn't then rely on just you everyone needs to pay it so as opposed to you paying that lump sum you have housemates that you guys can share the responsibilities everyone shares okay i will all contribute 20 pound each and we'll pay for the water bill or something so, so like moving into a new house is a nice way to like blend with other people like like-minded individuals so you can actually rent being a house share and everyone else there as students that have come from overseas to study just like you and then if you're ever feeling low or feeling down about something they could be there to literally like motivate you like no 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 it's fine i'm you know going through this as well it's gonna be okay um if you're a professional that's moved from a different area to another and you know you're not the city you were in is not as vibrant as where you come from or you know there's obviously so many differences um and you're just not feeling you're feeling a certain way about it there are other people that perhaps feeling the same way about it and you guys can like share you know ideas and like it's just nice to, it's comforting to know that there's someone there that you know is feeling the same way that you're feeling in my case anyways like actually i was actually lucky to because when i went into uni i had people that had been there been at the uni um longer than i have so if i ever was to go for a lecture and i didn't know where i was going and my housemate one of my housemates was say in the kitchen or in the um living area i'll just be like oh do you know where room f180 is or do you know where this 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 is and they'll direct me you know so it was just nice yeah so i i did that a lot honestly i did that a lot because when well, you're new to an environment new to university you don't really know where you are <laughs> so so it's just nice um that was really useful helpful for me yeah. well no need to buy furniture because best believe that the house here would always have um, the furniture is like the 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 house shed well the the, the accommodation that I got when I was at uni I had the room all to myself um, and in that room there was there was obviously a chair a table a wardrobe a bed um, a mattress obviously on the bed um, and even in the lounge we had obviously like sofas in the kitchen you have like basic things like if your landlord is nice like basic things like spoons knives but that's not even a problem but like what i just want to say is like you don't then have to furnish i mean if you're moving into your own apartment um like obviously when my husband moved from a shared accommodation <laughs> into his own apartment before obviously i joined him before we got married anyways man had to buy so much um oh i need to buy a sofa oh i need to buy a bed oh i need to buy this oh i need to buy oh no microwave oh no washing machine here you know things like that um but when you're in a shared house um that is just lifted that that burden is off you and there's them mama need to do all the things do you get so that financial burden is literally off your shoulders that's another benefit of obviously staying in a shared accommodation so another i'll say the last pro another thing i was gonna say is um a shared responsibility i've said it before but what i actually want to say under this is there's actually uh, provided that everyone is respectful in the house and um, there's that shared responsibility of who takes the bean out who cleans the kitchen who cleans the bathroom who tidies the living area you know you could even have a rotor of you know who does what on what days um, and that way everything doesn't you know rely on one person now like i said provided everyone is respectful and willing to work mm. which then brings me to the disadvantages of staying in the shared accommodation number one let's start with the one that actually annoys me the most badly behaved housemates oh my god i had my fair share of that um that could put you off just that like badly behaved housemates could literally put you off from renting a shared accommodation like it almost did for me but on the other hand um i think it sort of like helped me in the sense that i now know how to accommodate people more like i know how to just live with people i think that's one thing that obviously living in a shared accommodation did for me now when i say badly behaved housemates you have the ones that would literally just 
mess up the place and not clean up after themselves you have the one that party all night and if you're kind of person that you read at night and you just you just like your peace and quietness you just you just like a peaceful and quiet environment hmm. people are going to be playing loud music and you cannot sleep when you're playing a loud music you know it's what it is and um, you have the noisy ones you have the ones that would always bring their friends in, and even when you have your friends, your friends can't stay in the lounge because their friends are always the ones that occupy the lounge. Um, you have the ones that would refuse, even after you have a rota, they will refuse to actually do their part of the work. So if it's your, if it's someone's responsibility, for example, to take the beans out, they won't take the beans out. Now, you know, those are if you. <laughs> um, but if you're lucky to have like rest respectful housemates and everyone sort of like is respectful to one another and they know what they're doing then this might not be a problem for you so don't let this particular point of mind um be a determining factor for whether you should get a house or not honestly you might be lucky not to have you know people like that or maybe you just have the one housemate that behaves like that and it might not even be that bad you know and the rest are okay so yeah now as quickly as it is to make friends when you're living in a shared accommodate when you're living in a shared accommodation it's equally easy to lose friends now you then begin to see people's bad habits that you can't like you just can't live with for example um there's one person that would always shower and leave the place messy their hair all over the bathroom and there will be that one person, like I said earlier, that will bring their friends in, mess up the whole place and don't clean up. Like, you would see a lot of bad behaviours. And the people that you probably were friends with in the beginning of the term, um, when you then see all these behaviours in them, you just lose interest. And that's how people fall apart and you fall out of friendship. And yeah, it's easy to fall out of friendship. But don't worry, by the time you're falling out with your housemates, you'd have already made friends at uni or in your workplace. So don't worry, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> let's just all be civil that was me in my second year of uni I'm like let's just all be civil in this house like you can say hello hi but that's it <laughs> so yeah that's another thing so um, yeah now this one I hate now sharing the cost of damages now as nice as it sounds that you know you share the bills you know you share the cost of bills you know you don't have to pay everything by yourself equally if something happens in the communal area like the kitchen or the living room or the bathroom and um, if it's a shared bathroom because I know some rooms have ensuite um, but if it's just the one bathroom that everyone uses if something goes wrong if something is spoiled everyone obviously would have to share in the cost of the damage and um, because when the landlord then comes in to inspect the house or brings people to in to inspect the house it's all going to come out of your deposit rest assured um yeah that's just the bad thing even if you are not the one that made that you know mess or even if you're not the one that spoiled that item whatever it's just if the person that did it doesn't if the person that did it doesn't come clean then you would have to sharing the you know the cost of the damage being done that's been done basically yeah also with paying the bills this is from personal experience you there's always that one person where i realized that there was that one person that just would not pay his part of the bills so the electricity company would keep sending, even though, for example, the bills for the house to, for the electricity, for example, is £100. There's five of us in the house. We're all supposed to pay £20 each, yeah? Um, and four people obviously pay their £20, and there's that one person. Even if you pay the electricity company £80 and you don't pay up your remaining £20, they're going to keep sending you letters. They can even get, um, you know, a cut action against you um there's that one person that just did not pay the bills and we just ended up paying for him yeah there's always that one person so uh, as yeah yeah hopefully in the house that you're going to rent there's not going to be that one person but i found out that in the, in, in, the, in the space of the time that i was at uni the houses that i lived in 
there was always that one person that or and or two people that just did not want to pay their part of the bills and that just meant that we all had to pay for them because we didn't want our names dragged in the mud because my credit rating is so important to me and i, was, I wasn't going to let somebody's 20 pounds contribution or somebody's inability to, to contribute their own 20 pounds to the bills to ruin my name no i i i I take so much pride in my credit rating reports. So yeah, that's just another thing. Yeah. Also, I want to talk about safety concerns. Now, to be honest, this is not like a major, major thing because, like I said, in the times that I was at uni, safety wasn't like a big thing. For, wasn't a big issue for me because I felt safe in my environment. But I guess if you're living in an accommodation with people that you do not know, there's that you know a little bit of a doubt inside of you thinking, oh my god, am I safe in here? There's that, there's that bit of, you know, you might think one day, oh my God, is someone just gonna walk in and wait for me in the kitchen for me to get in and then, I don't know, no. But that wasn't the case for me. But um, what I mean by um, that is your housemates could literally be letting people in that they don't know, thinking that, so for example, someone might knock at the door, so I have come in to see Flora, and maybe they don't even know me. And my husband just be like, oh, Flora, yeah, yeah, she leaves here. Open the door, point my room to the person. Um, or um, the, your housemate can be kind of person that has so many friends that just duplicates his keys and then give it to all his friends. That they come stay in his room, or even when he's there, I don't even stay in his room. You just come stay in the lounge. And like this, are so many people coming into the house. You don't know them, but because your housemate is giving them one of the duplicates of the keys that he made, um, yeah. And they say they know your housemate you can't send them out of the house so these are some of the little bit little hiccups here and there um safety concerns but it's not usually like a major major issue because to be fair my experience living in the house share I, I felt safe i didn't have that issue at all last but not the least i want to say reduced privacy now the walls in the house are not usually soundproof so best believe that when you're having like a conversation with your friends and you guys are all high up there like, oh my god ha, ha, ha. best believe that your, your housemate could hear what you're saying and likewise like your housemate if they're really loud and they're talking and maybe you're trying to read or trying to sleep you could literally overhear their conversation so um that there is that reduced privacy you know and also like whenever a parcel comes for you they know what's right for you they know when like if you live in a house here and you go out every monday your housemate knows that you go out every monday you know they might actually know your routine so like oh when she comes back she goes to the kitchen my favorite food she stays there for 10 minutes then she goes upstairs and sleeps and then come back downstairs at five o'clock and like they could literally tell you I mean, not like anyone cares, but like if someone like is really interested in you, they could literally like. Otherwise, living in a shared accommodation is not so much of a bad idea, to be honest. Um, one thing I have to say though, and this is very very important, leaving it to last, is if you live in a shared accommodation and you uh, and and your house rent is bills inclusive, when you then want to like move into your own house. Or if you want to get like a contract or for like a phone contract, mobile mobile phone contract, or like you want to buy something and pay instrumentally, usually your credit rating might not be as great because there's not there's not that you haven't shown that you're financially stable in the sense that you've not shown that you're able to pay your bills, you've not shown that like being able to pay your bills monthly actually gives you like gives you a very good credit rate credit rating jigger so like um i'm gonna you know use my husband as an example because he because he told me this um so when he was a student um he was lives, lived in a house bills inclusive and then one, one time he wanted to get a phone contract and they would not give him a phone contract why wow, because um he didn't have a good credit rating at the time he was very obviously new to the country and so they just said oh you don't have proof we don't have proof that you'll be able to pay bills because you have you don't have any you don't have a good credit rating you don't have any credit rating score basically and so he wasn't able to like get like what he wanted to get at the time so just to bear in mind um that when you're paying your bills inclusive that could limit you in terms of um, if you don't want to get so for example now you you stay in a shared accommodation you've saved so much money and then you want to get a mortgage straight after you've left that shared accommodation it might be a little bit difficult and um, because you might not have any credit rating score 
you know so that's one thing that i would say is a major issue um but otherwise i enjoyed my time and yeah i hope you enjoyed watching this video until i come away next time remain blessed